Hello Croatian learners! Welcome or welcome back to our channel Learn Croatian. My name is Ines and I'm here for you to help you on your Croatian learning journey. Have you been trying to learn Croatian verbs? Well, this video is for you because today I want to talk to you about the present tense in Croatian. Remember, this video is a part of the uh, Croatian verb series, so please check out our other videos with the links in the description box below. Without further ado, let's learn about the present tense in Croatian. As an introduction to the present tense, let me just say that the present tense is a, um, a simple verb. This means that you would only use one word to express this time in Croatian. So when is the present tense used? Obviously, it's used for an action which is happening at this moment or right now. For example, I'm reading a book at this moment. In Croatian, you would say čitam knjigu. Another instance when the present tense is used in Croatian is to express something which happens often. So, if you have a habit or if something happens regularly. So, you could say, I speak Croatian. Govorim Hrvatski. Another instance when the present tense is used is to express near future. For example, um, Tomorrow we are going on a field trip. Sutra idemo na izlet. And finally, um, you would use the present tense in Croatian to express something which has happened, which has started happening in the past, but it's still going on today. For example, I've been living in this town my whole life. In Croatian, you would say, Cijeli život živim u ovom gradu. Okay, so notice that in English I had to switch between a couple of tenses. I had to switch between simple present tense, present continuous tense, or present perfect tense. However, in Croatian you would use just the present tense, or as in Croatian it is called present. So let's see what are the easiest way for you to learn the present tense in Croatian. I do want to show you how the present tense is formed and how it works. However, the easiest way for you to learn the present tense is um, to learn when you learn new verbs. For example, a verb voljeti, to love. Um, you would obviously learn it in its infinitive form, voljeti, but then immediately learn the first person singular, okay? The first person singular would be volim. Now, a little bit later, I will tell you about the different endings for the present tense, but why do you have to learn the first person singular? This is because uh, every verb in Croatian is conjugated. Uh, conjugation means you are changing the verb or the verb changes its form as it expresses a different person or as it expresses singularity or plurality. So if you want to say, I love, you would say volim. But if, he, if you want to say we love, we, you would say volimo. So um, later I will show you how to um, conjugate each verb. But the reason why you want to learn the first person singular is because there are uh, four different types of um, endings uh, that you would need to use uh, for each verb. And as as long as you know the first person singular, you will be able to tell which one of the four endings you need to use. So, um, let me explain what I'm talking about and when I explain how you form the present tense and it'll be more clear. So, the present tense is formed uh, in two simple steps. You would need to find uh, the base of the word or the root of the word or rather root of the verb and then the second step would be to add different endings, the endings uh, that correspond to the present tense. 
How do you find the root of the verb or as we would call it in the present tense, the present base form? So um, if you were a native speaker, uh, there is a way to find the present base form. But for you as an English speaker, um, the easiest way to find the present base form is if you take the infinitive of the verb, um, which a lot of the wor verbs or the majority of the verbs end on TI in Croatian. So you would take off the ending iti, ati, uti or yeti. And whatever is left would be your present base form. So this would be that root of the verb onto which you build or you add the endings to get the entire present uh, tense. So for example, uh, here is a verb ručati to have lunch. As you notice, uh, the verb ends in T, in T I as the majority of Croatian verbs in infinitive. So you would take the ending A T I off and you have ruč. This is the present base form. Or you have the verb letjeti to fly. Again, take off the J E T I and whatever is left is the present base form. A verb udahnuti or uh, to take a breath or an inhale. Uh, take off the UTI and ye, whatever is left is the present base form. Or the verb to forget, zaboraviti. Take the ITI off and you will get the present base form. Now remember the present base form is the first step into building a present tense. The next step is using one of the four endings uh, for the first person singular and that's how you get the present tense. So let's look at this table and you will see um, all the four endings. For all the four endings for the first person singular as you can see here are M, Yem, Am and Im. Now, these are just the endings, the four different endings for the first person singular. Um, as you can see in the table, each one of these endings has the corresponding endings for all the other persons in the singular and uh, the plural. So let's look at this verb to write, pisati. In, um, in the first person singular, I would be I write, pishem. Second person, pishish. Third person, Pishe. First person plural, pishemo. Second pl person plural, pishete. Third person plural, pishu. As you can see, these are the endings for the M ending for the first person singular. M, esh, e, emo, ete, u. You have different endings for yem, am, and im, as you can see here. Now, this is what conjugating a verb means. You change the verb's form um, going through three persons singular and three persons plural. And this is done in all of the verbs in, um, in Croatian, and this is how you do it for the present tense. Um, so, remember in the beginning when I said it's easiest for you to learn uh, when you learn a new verb, it's easiest for you to learn the infinitive and the first person uh, singular present because the first person singular would immediately tell you if the ending is M or Yem, Am or Im. And then if you remember all the other um, all the other endings for the other persons, it'll be easier for you to conjugate this verb further. So again, the simplest way for you to learn the present tense is you learn the infinitive and learn the first person singular. And then obviously you would need to memorize these endings if you want to grapple with grammar, and then you will know how to conjugate these verbs. Now, um, be careful about some of these verbs uh, because um, a lot of the a lot of my friends <laughs> ha struggle with uh, the verb pisati and pisati, which is very different. In fact, pisati means to write, 
and pisati <laughs> means to pee. So, as you can see, um, it's really important to know which type of ending you need for the first person singular because pishem, you're using the M ending, it would be I'm writing. But if you use am ending, pisham, you would be saying you are peeing. So, please don't go and pee on your papers in Croatian, okay? Remember your endings in the present tense. And of course, um, as I always advise you, whenever you learn the grammar, it's really, really easier for you if you just uh, have a lot of input, if you listen to the locals a lot, if you read a lot. Um, and then you'll notice that these different verbs kind of change the form. And um, now you understand how this form is changed or how these verbs are conjugated. So remember, learn the infinitive, then learn the first person singular, and then you'll know how to conjugate the verb further. Now, I do want to um, give a heads up here. Not all of the verbs in Croatian end on T, T-I. Actually, um, some of the verbs also end on CHI. And the reason why I'm not talking about them is because to find the present base form in these verbs is a little bit different and more difficult. Um, and um, again, the safest and easiest way to learn these verbs as well is to learn the infinitive and the first person singular, because when you, were, uh, you learn the first person singular, you will um, know the other uh, persons as well, or you will know how to conjugate this verb. Um, these verbs are a little bit more difficult because uh, there are a lot of sound changes with uh, the um, with the verbs that end on chi. For example, um, you have a verb pechi or to bake, and again, the first person singular you would learn is pechem. Okay, um, see, makes no sense. Where did you get pet? <laughs> but if you will know that the ending is M, right? So now you know that you need to use the endings M, S, E, M, O, E, T, U. So it would be pechem, pechesh, peche, pechemo, pechete. But the third person plural is Peku, and this is where the sound change happens. I will cover these sound changes in another video, but you will be okay if you just learn um, the infinitive first person singular and then uh, go ahead and conjugate the verb using the different endings, and most of the time you will be correct. Here and there, there will be some changes, but don't worry about it now. Um, you will correct yourself as the time goes and as you speak more and listen to the locals. Another thing I want to talk to you about the present tense is that is again a simple tense, meaning you need one word. Um, the reason for this is because of the properties, grammatical properties that the verbs have. Um, so like I said, uh, you've heard me talk about the person, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, or um, the count, singular or plural. So in this one word, uh, so in this one verb, you can tell if I'm talking about myself, if I'm talking about you or them. Um, it's usually easy to tell. So for this reason, uh, the subject is often emitted from the sentence because um, you can say ja te volim or simply volim te. Now notice, if you want to use the subject, the order of the ver of the words would change. So um, just you're safe to just leave the subject out um, completely because a lot of the time the pronoun is omitted because the verb itself will tell you who it is talking about. Now the only time when you kind of want to consider to use the pronoun, unless it's obvious who you're talking about, is the third person person singular. Because in the present tense, the third person singular will have the same form for him, her, or for it. So if you say, Chita knigu, it can mean he is reading a book, she is reading a book, or it is reading a book. Chita knigu is still correct, but unless um, somebody had asked you, oh, where's your brother? Or, oh, where's your sister? Um, 
it would be weird to just say chita knigu, right? So you would might you might want to use the subject. On chita knigu. He is reading a book. Or ona chita knigu. She is reading a book. And so on and so on. So again, um, you can use just one uh, just one word um, to express the present, and it's always just one word. And for this reason, you can often omit or leave out the pronoun or the subject if uh, it's really obvious um, who you're talking about. The only difference is for the third person singular, he, she, it has the same uh, mm, form of the verb. So um, maybe use the pronoun there. Another thing I want to talk to you about the present tense is how to express the negative form or how to negate the verb. So uh, this is very simple in Croatian. There is uh, something called a negative particle or the negation particle ne. It means no. Or as you would translate in, um, in English present tense, don't or doesn't. So uh, how would you negate the verb? Let's say um, you are saying um, čitam knigu. I'm reading a book. If you want to say, I'm not reading a book, ne čitam knigu. So notice we use the negative particle no, used the present tense of the verb čitam, and knigu as an object is the same. Uh, the negative particle is separated from the verb always, except for the three cases which I will mention later. But you use these things uh, separately and you get the negation. Ne čitam knjigu. Volim te, ne volim te. Now, even though these ver words are um, written separately, they are pronounced as one word. This is where a lot of native children, um, I mean native speakers, children when they are learning Croatian in school, uh, they always forget to separate ne from the verb. Um, or when they're reading, they would separate these two, ne čitam, which would be incorrect, obviously. So remember, even though uh, the negation uses two words, you always pronounce them as one word. Let's look at some more examples. Čitaš svaki dan. You read every day. How would you say in the negative? Right. Ne čitaš svaki dan. Simple, right? Okay, here's another one for you. On kupuje kruh. He's buying bread. How would you say the negative form? There you go. On ne kupuje kruh. Excellent. How would you say you can help? Možete pomoći. How would you say the negative? Excellent! Ne možete pomoći. And so on and so on. Remember, use the negative particle ne separate, separately from the present tense and you will get the negative. Now, I did say that ne is always separated from the verb. There are three verbs in which this is an exception. And these verbs are neću, I won't, nemoj, don't, and nemam. I don't have. Uh, now notice that the first two are the future tense and the imperative, but the third one is the present tense, so let me um, explain this one shortly. Nemam is I don't have. If uh, you wanted to use the rule that we talked about earlier, you would say, um, so it would be imam would be I have, and ne imam would be the normal uh, negation of the verb, right? However, in this instance, we take out the I and we put these two together and form a verb nemam. So, um, the verb is conjugated again, nemam, nemaš, nema, nemamo, nemate, nemaju. Uh, this is the exception for uh, the negation of the verb but it is conjugated the same as any other present tense verb. And this is um, the verb to have, imati. 
And now finally, um, how do you form questions in the present tense? Again, you need to learn a particle. It's an inter interrogative particle called li. This particle is also written, always written separately from the verb, and it comes after the present tense verb. So, for example, you want to say, um, do you have a book? You would use the present, imash, second person singular, imash, the inter interrogative particle li, and uh, the object book, knigu, in the acu uh, accusative case. Imash li knigu. Or, can you hear me? Chuyesh li me. Again, uh, literally, you would say, you hear, interrogative particle, me, uh, me as an accusative, um, as an object. So, chuyesh li me. Um, again, same as for the uh, negative particle, even though it's written separately, you pronounce them as one word. Imashli, chuyeshli. Or, for example, can I help you? Moguli ti pomoci. Or, do we like ice cream? Volimo li sladoled. Volimo li sladoled. Uh, notice that you always take the present verb and after it you add the interrogative particle. Uh, so whenever you want to make an interrogative sentence, um, you would start with the present verb, add the particle, and then the rest of the sentence. Now obviously the exceptions here are when you're using interrogative pronouns. So obviously you can say when, where, who, when, why, etc. So um, in this instance, uh, you would uh, ask questions in this manner. Let's say uh, the, um, the indicative, uh, indicative uh, sentence is you need help. Trebaš pomoć. Now, um, if you wanted to ask, do you need help? Obviously, you would just switch first. You would put the present, the interrogative particle, and help. Trebaš li pomoć. Now, if you want to say, what do you need? Again, you're using just the interrogative uh, pronoun. Što? What is što? And then again, the present verb. Trebaš. Što trebaš? What do you need? Or, when do you need help? Interrogative particle. Kada? Present. Trebaš. Pomoć. Or why do you need help? Zašto trebaš pomoć? Right? The only time when the verb would change for interrogative sentences when you're using the interrogative pronouns is when you ask who. Because who is automatically the third person singular. So if you want to say who needs help, even in English you see that the verb changes. In Croatian you would say tko treba pomoć. Treba is the third person singular. Okay, I think this was, uh, this was simple and easy to learn, correct? So now, after this video, you know how to form the present tense, you know how to conjugate the present tense, you know how to ask questions and how to make negations, so you are ready to start speaking, my friend. Don't forget to expand your vocabulary using input and output. Just listen a lot, but also speak, 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 speak whenever you have a chance. And please don't be afraid to speak. All of us in Croatia, we love when foreigners are trying to speak our language. Please understand, we know, we know it's a difficult language to learn, and we love you for trying. So even if you make mistakes, no one's going to care except for you. So just <laughs> let that go and speak as much as you can, because the more you speak, the more you will learn and more quickly you will learn. 
Again, um, this was the present tense. There are other videos about other tenses in Croatian, so please check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today. Again, my name is Ines, and I'm here for you to help you with your Croatian learning. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, comment in um, the comments below, and I will try to get back to you and help you and answer your questions to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Doviđenja and sretno!